So, uh, strong job numbers, Theo. Are you Oh, long? yeah. Are oh, yeah. I, actually, I was trading the ascending triangle pattern on the euro USD on the daily chart. Um, <laughs> I might be going to stop out at some point soon. We are below uh, 110 now. So, um, yeah, likely. Let me just check. Yeah. 0980. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm still, no, I'm still surviving. Um, uh, my stop loss is at 1094, something like that. If you if you would have traded gold, you would have definitely been dropped out right now. Yes. <laughs> so I think we're okay. down how much? 2% now. Yeah, that's crazy. okay. So, to be honest, I mean, I, I'd awesome. like to hear your, your thoughts on this. Do you think that there is manipulation going on now into the weekend? So just imagine you're, let's say... Um, you're you're a politician or something and uh you you just you just don't want people to start to get let's say um excited is a nice word probably yeah uh, think about the whole situation in a very skeptical way let's say what we're currently witnessing uh, all around the place everywhere so um exactly and, and if you look at gold for example we've seen that plenty of times now i think this is the third or fourth row uh, a week in a row that we're selling off on a friday in gold um, and yeah. there has been okay. lots of, of, of rumors around um, um, yeah. manipulation and gold prices and so on and so forth. Do you think that? that so that we take the NFPs now to, to justify such a dump and potential flush below 2000? Or is, is there mm, yeah. something which comes out of my, let's say... Okay, uh, look, what you mentioned, Jens, it's uh, really not a coincidence. And uh, I mean, you are very spot on the example. Like every Friday, it's been uh, uh, some weeks, but... I just see the chart and it's like when the price rallies so fast, so high, but the momentum is lacking, it's not there based on the previous uh, impulse move, let's say to the, to the upside, because we are in an uptrend. And for the second wave now in a row, we made a higher high yesterday on the daily chart of the gold, but with that gap, to the upside that massive gapped and uh, today on the webinar i said guys i'm 100 sell uh selling on the gold i put some limit orders above the yesterday's high i didn't go filled in but intraday yes i'm shorting it since the uh, 10 a.m today just because of okay. of this it's it doesn't make sense. The price rally so much without momentum i mean and those divergences on all the indicators that gap explosion gap but but you're you're yeah. confident that we'll make new all-time highs oh yeah definitely okay that's good then i then yeah, i keep definitely. my gold bars i keep them in the safe and then i'm, I'm oh fine. yeah 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 <laughs> you can carry them with you <laughs> So, well and at the end it's 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 about get rich or die trying right <laughs> yes yes <laughs> well done you are awesome <laughs> ah too much <laughs> <laughs> okay um so okay. i take over then and then we have a look at sure. the non payrolls um i wish you the best luck <laughs> have a nice weekend Theo. see you, you next too week. yes bye guys bye, bye, from bye. Me. so um yeah hello welcome and and welcome here from uh from berlin germany so uh we have some some very interesting uh um things to discuss today so it's not just the non from payrolls in fact but it's also i think apple earnings that they were quite good and they were solid at least solid um, and we are not selling off. Now, non-farm payrolls come in better than expected. This is noteworthy uh, because you probably have heard what the Fed delivered last um, Wednesday. We, we talked about, uh, or we, we heard, yes, we um, um, hike rates for another 25 basis points, but then we pause or at least we uh, keep rates at the current level if there is no need to act other that's probably a good way to put it and the thing is if you closely watch the reaction uh to these um uh, comments and the statement from the fed we saw that equities um not initially or immediately sold off but then after that became clear that further rate hikes might be an option we started to sell off because there's no clear um saying where where the fed states well no further rate hikes but Probably we are starting to discuss further um, uh, rate cuts from here due to the um, um, situation we find in the banking sector. And that being said, 
It's very interesting because now if we and we will um, discuss this um, from a theoretical standpoint in a few seconds here, a strong employment situation uh, leaves room for the Fed to keep high um, 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 rates at an elevated level for longer than anticipated from market participants. Um, because we also have to focus on, it's not just the overall economy, but it's also to uh, bring inflation back down to 2% and to the um, uh, a target rate from the from the um, Federal Reserve in this case. So good numbers from the job market, um, that makes it more likely that they will stay at an elevated level. And now, if you look at equities, it's not that we are um, um, running on the upside, but we are very solidly reacting. So there was a quick flush on the downside, and then we are pushing higher. And this is very interesting to note um, because this is a sign of strength. And if we combine this now with Apple and the earnings and quite solid earnings, and we make it, and this case of Apple, we can also have a look at, at the chart in a few uh, minutes then um, um, just for, for a potential play here. If we can hold above 170, probably 171, and we continue to trade higher following the earnings and see a strong weekly close in Apple, um, even though we, we already ran up some um, um, for, for quite some time now, and, and we're potentially... Also, we could see a bounce from here. Um, I think this in, in combination is a strong sign for the equity markets in general. And uh, that could lead to further gains. And in case of the DAX, for example, coming to the German equity index here, um, after yesterday, we attacked but didn't break below 15,700. We are probably ready to go for another attempt to um, um, push forth 16,000. And if we make it above, then potentially new all-time highs might be around the corner also here. So. Um, long thing short, we have a very, very interesting uh, data release to cover, to analyze. But before we start, please um, understand that all I present to you here in the upcoming minutes is for educational purposes only. So it might be that we are formulating trade hypotheses, game plans, how to cover the markets, um, 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 the current environment. But if you plan to take any trades based on that, please make sure that you understand there's risks involved when trading leverage products like contracts for difference. And in this context, that you understand that um, if you, you take solely all risks here, so you can keep all profits if they occur, hopefully they will occur, but um, I could also be completely wrong on my on my um, 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 calls here, respectively on my on my place I formulate. So that being said, please make sure that you understand there's much risk involved losing money and you should be aware of these risks. Read the risk disclaimer carefully. You can find it on the website abnormalmarkets.com for further details. And um, so that's it around the introduction. I don't think I need to um, introduce um, Admirals any further, but um, uh, Theo did already a good, great job, but we can jump right into, um, first of all, the question, why are employment numbers of interest? And then cover the non-farm payrolls, uh, which were just released several minutes ago, and also potentially cover the, the price action and uh, the, the current drop also in gold, for example, we get to see. Um, and probably why it's not such a good idea. I, I was about like thinking, hmm, probably taking the small long here um, after this drop now being down 2%, but somehow it's kind of kind of difficult, I, I, I'd say. I'd, I'd probably wait for US mar um, um, equity markets to open and, and clearer signs that buyers are stepping in. Not really sure if, if this is a good environment right now to, to, to buy, but there's potentially clearer place um, in other assets. But before we look at the markets and um, uh, use this um, theoretical knowledge then and, and put it to work in, in, uh, in the markets, first of all, we have to make sure to um, have a good question, a uh, good answer to this question here, why are employment numbers of interest? So if the confidence in the overall economy is good, or there is also um, confidence in the current political situation, which is obviously not the case, and this is not just the case um, over here in Europe, but also in the US, around the globe, I'd probably say there's some lots of, of, of difficult things right now happening. Sometimes you're just shaking your head in disbelief. I mean, I'm located in Berlin in Germany. And um, all I heard so far from uh, people from other countries, like for example, Theo, um, located in, in the Cyprus or other people located in the UK, for example, like Paul, um, people are just shaking their heads in disbelief about the overall um, developments, especially from an economic standpoint over here, what's happening in Germany, energy perspective, or energy poli policy in this case. 
Um, and uh, I, I just want to want to send out a message to the world out there. So we here over here in Germany, we are also shaking our heads in disbelief. And what's happening right now, no one really understands that. But um, what we know for sure is that it's not about climate. That's something we can definitely say because um, everything we get to see over here, especially from an um, energy policy perspective, just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. It's not about climate. There's another agenda which is followed, whatever the agenda might be, but it's certainly not about climate. Um, and this is um, then meaning you start to... Um, mistrust governments you start to mistrust policy um, um, um makers in general and that being said um leaves people not being confident in the overall economic situation in general the same is also potentially true to some extent um, um in in the us and the white house there's also some strange developments sometimes and a very strange rhetoric being used uh, from from um, um, White House officials. But long thing short, we want to take it here. Just imagine or just um, think about a world in which um, there's currently um, confidence in the overall economy and there's confidence in, in politics and politicians. And um, once this is the case, people look into more optimistic into the future. And that being said, um, you start to invest. You start to say, well, um, I'm willing to to take risks. Um, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm willing to 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 take a loan, let's say, for example, and um, invest in my business or in my vision for the future. Um, because there's also, from a political standpoint, certainly you you have to to have trust into um, the overall um, 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 economic situation and um, look into a prosperous future, for example. So like, for example, when you're looking at the um, housing market right now in Germany, you um, it's not just a slump, but it's complete crash right now. People are not investing because they just don't know what to make out of these policy decisions um, you get to see. Some people have houses um, and it's part, it's the major part of their life savings, in fact, and um, now the government comes out and says, well, you have to have um, this and that in terms of um, delivering energy to your house. In Germany, we call this Wärmepumpe. I don't even know whether this is, um, there's an there's a, um, um, English word for this. Um, and it's not just that we don't know where to get these pieces. Well, let me just see. Probably, let me just translate this, whether I find, probably I find this here. So Wärmepumpe. So this is uh, the heat pump, okay, hydro extractor. I ho hopefully you can you can you can work with this. Hope you really understand that. So um, like this is this is what what people are looking for and classic oil and gas. Um, 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 let's call them heat sources are not allowed anymore. Um, and they they really start to put a lot of pressure on people and uh, to to have such a let's call it heat pump in this case, um, you have to completely um, uh, think over your your um, 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 house in a complete different way because you need an infrastructure to make this work to heat to be able to heat up your home, um, put it simply. Um, and so that being said, it's not just that that this is a big part, because now just imagine this part of your life savings, um, and, and it's a major part, and you don't have the money to finance such a um, 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 rebuilding of your house uh, to make it work with such a heat pump. And in addition to that, um, it's it's also that uh, it's not sad that there's enough um, um, companies producing these heat pumps, for example. So when looking at these developments over here um, for for the climate, for whatever it might be, um, and, and you're shaking your heads in disbelief, well, you're just not investing. That's the same for the overall economy. If you if you don't look into a future where you can, it's not just that you, that you can rely on the decisions from policymakers, but in addition to that, you also have to make sure um, uh, that that um, um, you can keep for the risk you're taking, you can keep um, a large chunk um, of the money you will make out of your investment, for example. So when you look at where we are in terms of taxes over here in Germany and social insurance, it's uh, from an OECD perspective, I think it's uh, the second highest, probably the highest, I'm not, not really sure, after Belgium or we are already um, ahead of Belgium right now. And um, you're, that's 50% of all your income. You pay in taxes, you pay in social insurance. And it's like, you, you're taking lots of risk for that. 
Um, and the question is, why should you do that? It doesn't make sense. Sometimes you make more money by just staying at home and uh, live on, let's call it social benefits here. Just like you, you don't need to do anything. And this is all these developments right now are the reason why, why people are um, um, not willing to invest. And this is exactly the, the complete opposite of the environment we are looking at here. So if you look into a prosperous future, if you think, well, there is growth opportunity, there is money to be made, I can, I can take care of my family especially i can make sure that um it's not just my family um which i can um, um um serve for but also i can employ people if you have such an optimistic outlook well this is usually meaning you're you're um loaning out or you you're you're taking um, um money here into your hands and you invest it which means um naturally um you, you see a build up in in the overall economic infrastructure and there's also um, a demand to be fulfilled here to make sure that people um, um, are delivered with the products they are um, 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 which they they want to buy. And um, so that means you have increasing orders in factories. So we are looking here at the manufacturing sector, but this is also true for the uh, non-manufacturing side and, and the advertisement business, for example. But we are focusing here because it's easier to, to, to grasp the concept in terms of manufacturing sector. And well, you have a result, as a result, increasing orders, you have increasing industrial production. And uh, that is due to the case or due to the fact that um, companies will meet higher demand through more um, investment here. And then, well, that, what does it mean? Well, the more you have to produce, the more people you have to hire, which means um, you're hiring more people, which, which means nothing more than the unemployment rate naturally goes down. And um, these, 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 um, um, the workforce wants to be compensated accordingly. So that means uh, you have also an um, increase in average hourly wages, for example. So these are all subcomponents from these um, um, employment releases, employment numbers releases, which need to be, um, um, which, which you need to focus on. And um, if you have more people with higher incomes, well, you have an increasing uh, consumption because people, um, they, they, it's not just that they want to invest, but they want to want also to have a happy life, let's say. So they want to go on vacation, they want to um, buy a house, for example, which is then also um, increasing orders in, in the manufacturing business here in terms of who builds the house, for example. Um, but there's also luxury goods, which, which are bought. And um, so there is naturally a higher propensity to consume. And the result overall is higher economic growth, and rising inflation because there's high demand. There's now money chasing goods, which is naturally meaning that prices increase. And this is um, the, the, the back um, um, bone, in fact, of, of rising interest rates. And the reason why interest rates um, are um, 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 increased by central banks to avoid an overheating of the inflation and um, um, raging inflation, let's say. So in the current environment, um, this is not the case. This is not the reason for inflation. The reason for inflation is that um, that that people were um, um, told to stay at home, lockdowns during COVID, um, and uh, they were compensated with lots of money and stimulus checks and um, so on and so forth. The same is true for for companies which had to shut down their overall um, um, business activ activity. And um, after we came back to normal, let's say. Um, all the money which was pumped into the system, into the economy here, is now chasing fewer goods because there was an interruption of the supply chains, for example. So you have a rise in inflation while the overall economy um, didn't produce more. So it's not that um, there's more money chasing more goods, but it's more money chasing the same goods, probably lesser, uh, less goods. Um, which means in this context that you see a natural increasing inflation, which is now fought by um, the central banks with rising um, 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 with the, with the raise in interest rates, which means now you you see the same economic um, um, productivity, let's say, um, and same productivity in this case, where probably also an interruption because people just realized, well, I don't want to want to do this business anymore, or people um, um, fell out of the workforce because they 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 just lost their jobs because the companies shut down um, after the lockdowns and and um, are not are not. Um, um, coming back, let's say. And um, all this in combination means that you see now rising inflation, which is fought by with hikes in interest rates was, let's say. So now we're at the point where this is um, um, 
reversing, uh, or at least we don't get to see further rate hikes. And so that being said, now gives us a good idea on where we stand right now and why the employment situation is very, very important and a good indication of where we stand um, from an economy perspective. So what I usually do here in this context is um, I give you I give you um, an overview in the so-called Fed Watch tool. By the way, let me just let me just um, jump over here. So this is the Apple earnings, by the way. This is something we'll look at in a few seconds. I will share the link here so you can you can play around with this tool yourself. Um, it's a great tool because it gives us an idea on where is the market standing in terms of expectations from the um, um, target rate, from the Fed target rate um, at a certain point in the future. That means right now we can see we are at 500 to 525 basis points. So this is um, um, where we are right now after the 25 basis point rate hike from the Fed last um, Wednesday. And um, so what I have here now is um, I'm looking into the future and I'm looking at where the market sees the target rate at the December meeting in uh, 2023. So at the 13th of December. And you can see here that the market is expecting with a likelihood of nearly 80%. So summing up these two columns here, they're seeing um, um, interest rates of minimum 425 to 450, which is significantly below what we're currently seeing here with 500 to 525. What does it mean? Well, it means the market participants or the futures market here is expecting the Fed to cut rates. And this in the next six months. So we are looking here to December. And why do they expect that? Well, simply speaking, because they see that there is a slow in economic growth. It's also something which you can find. For example, let's, let's jump over here to trading economics. and go to the United States and have a look here at the GDP growth rate. So what you can see is that there's a um, um, deceleration in terms of economic growth. So there were two um, uh, quarters of negative economic growth in 2022, which is, by the way, the classic definition of a recession. Um, and there was, a, a, they, they, in the White House, they tried to redefine this and then say, well, this is not true. And they have a solid point. They now say, well, look at the overall development we get to see in the um, 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 employment sector. So non-farm payrolls, for example, um, look at the unemployment rate. Numbers are not indicating um, some kind of um, economic slowdown or recession. And this is true. This is certainly true. But Putting the, all this together, and we're currently witnessing, well, we see that there's at least a cool down in, 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 um, in the overall economy. We saw a massive bounce um, here in, in the, in the um, um, third quarter of 2022. And what you're now seeing is that we're starting to decelerate once again. So we're dropping 2.3%. 2.6, and now we're at 1.1%, which is, by the way, you can see it's the weakest pace of expansion, economic expansion, since Q2 2022. And that being said, is an indication that the overall US economy in this case is slowing down. So slowdown in overall economic activity is something we know this now from the theoretical background, which is usually meaning there will jobs which 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 just will cut so people will lose their jobs rather sooner or later probably um, um sooner due to the developments we currently witnessing in the world um, in the world of artificial intelligence so ai is a big topic there um and 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 naturally people potentially losing their jobs so putting all this together then uh, leaves us here with the fat watch tool at um, market participants in the uh, futures market saying well guys we expect the fed has to cut rates in addition, this is not just the, the economic slowdown we are witnessing in the U.S., but also in addition to the pressure we are facing in the um, regional banking sector. You probably have seen the developments around um, um, First Republic or Signature Bank last month. No, in March. It was March. Um, what's the other one? Silicon Valley Bank, for example. There's other banks which are of high interest right now you can see that here so they're usually at the most um, um active traded names in the pre-market we can see that here so pac west bank corp for example western alliance bank corp by the way um if, if you click on them let's let's just click here on on um well and let's move back let's say to the overall history so the the, the stock here 
that was in um, January 2021. So this is two years ago, but the stock was trading at $116. So right now, $80 below that crash. Um, if we go back here, we look at PacWest, for example, $4. This is from where we come. So very choppy, up and down, up and down, up and down. But um, around 2022, one year ago, the stock was trading around $50. So right now, minus 90%. If banks are crashing like that, there's something wrong with the system. We don't want to dig too deep into this, but the developments we're currently seeing here is definitely something the Fed has to keep an eye on. They are saying the overall situation in the economy um, is, is, is strong. It's not just the economy, which is strong. And by the way, let me just check here. Wow, this is cool. Um, I just have to, I just have to 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 check here my um my stocks I play to, to plan to trade for today, um and that's why I hear you you probably remember that I I just have to to type in my my numbers because after the webinar I will jump right into uh, the action here of several stocks I'm planning to trade, and um, these are the plays so DraftKings after earnings yesterday Lyft and also I have to keep an, certainly I have to keep an eye on um. Apple, which is by the way still above 170. This is this is really really strong. So that that happened um, in 2022, I think in January. Um, also, that uh, the, the Apple came to the rescue at least for a short period of time, um, and uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. If we see an opening drive above 171 and holding, I'd say this is a clear sign of um, further gains ahead in in uh, in Apple. So definitely, I, I, well, we, we need some time. That's probably something to, to, to say here. We, we need some time. but um, And that's why I'm not in a hurry, but uh, it's definitely something which, which could be of, of high interest for today. Potential short play I have also here with Lyft. A little light. Let's see if we drop $9. So, But we have to focus on the, on the banks here, or we were focusing on the banks. Great coincidence. <laughs> um, so long thing short, the overall situation is very, very tense. And they were pointing, we're saying, well, there's no pressure in the banking sector. Well, you can't trust central bankers and you can't trust politicians anymore. That became obvious over the course of the last, let's say three years minimum. Um, and and uh, just look at the rhetoric which was used from um, these, these um, officials here, especially central bankers, telling you, well, you know, we don't see any um, significant rise in inflation. That was in 2021. And everyone was sure about this, that inflation will rage rather sooner or later. And why? Well, very simply speaking, because there's much more money chasing fewer goods. This is this is um, um, economy 101. So <laughs> that's, that's usually resulting in raging inflation. Um, if these same people tell you now the banking sector is sound, well, you know, there's lots of trouble um, and I obviously don't want to tell you the truth for whatever reason, but it's certainly something to be worried about. And the market is telling exactly that. It's saying, well, you can say whatever you want. You can say you don't plan to cut rates. You have to. Rather sooner or later, you have to cut rates very aggressively. And we expect you to minimum go lower 75 basis points within the next six months. So this is now a very long introduction. Um, what does it mean? Well, it means that once the numbers come in better than expected, non-farm payrolls today, which were released, well, this should usually give the central bank, in this case, the Fed, more room to say, well, we told you so. Everything's great. It's not the banking sector, but it's the overall economy. We, we're not worried. It's like still, well, it's recession signs. We're probably forming there, but it will be a soft landing and no worries about that. And this is exactly what these numbers tell us. I'm sorry, uh, what these numbers tell you here. So it's live squawk. By the way, it's a great um, follow on on um, a Twitter for for um, real time updates and news here. And you can see two fifty three against one eighty five expected. Um, you have an unemployment rate coming in at three point four percent. So not people falling out of the work um, force here, but it's there's more people joining or having jobs. But it's, it depends a little on how you calculate this. We don't want to dig too deep here into this, but all in all, that's a solid, solid number uh, or solid numbers in general from from the non-farm payrolls um, I'm released here. You see the average hourly earnings; they they increased over the course of the last year, four point four percent over month on month on a month on month basis. 
0.5%. So everything you see here is pointing to higher inflation, which means higher rates, which means potentially toxic for equities. So usually you expect equities to sell off on that. And now we're jumping here into the chart. And what you see, this is now gold, which is also, by the way, we can also um, um, here have a look at gold um, probably um, um, at the beginning. So what we have here in terms of gold is um, we, we, are, we, are, we are looking, let me just check here. Okay. Um, we also see a dump because usually gold is negatively correlated to yields. If yields rise, you expect gold to drop because there is no yield being paid when you hold gold. Um, if you see, an, um, let's say, dovish rhetoric where yields dropping, this is usually an environment in which gold starts to rise. Um, and so this is right now here, the complete opposite. You see strong numbers, and then you see the drop in gold, which is usually um, driven by, and that's something you can see here. So this is the candle where the non-farm payrolls were released, and we dropped 2030. That was also a key level. In the morning, um, I was asked from some um, clients which level I would watch, especially in gold. And I told them, I'd probably keep an eye on um, 2030. If we drop that and hold below, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign in terms of further weakness to be expected then um, um, here into, into um, um, the evening and the weekly close. And also based on what I just um, um, discussed with Theo at the beginning of this webinar. Um, and um, ah, I'm sorry. At the beginning of the webinar um, and, and with, the, with the selling pressure, which happened here in, in gold over the course of the last um, um, Fridays over and over again. So there's a very interesting um, um, pattern, which is, which is, which is um, um, occurring. You can see that there were some sharp pushes higher, we'll put it that way. So there's some pushes higher that wasn't necessarily always on a Friday, but um, it was minimum two times, I remember, over the course of the last um, months. There was sharp pushes and there were sharp drops, sharp push, sharp drop, sharp push, sharp drop. Now we regained and pushed above 2000 um, um, after the developments in the banking sector over the course of the last week, yeah, from, from Monday onwards. Um, and so market participants dumping their expectations in terms of uh, the Fed will stay at this elevated level in terms of rates, but has to keep, um, 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 cut rates rather sooner than later. Um, but all in all, the initial reaction right now here is bearish based on the expectation that the market um, or that, that the Fed will keep rates at an elevated level. And this is usually something which is pushing gold lower than in this case. Again, an environment in which you expect equities to sell off. If we look at the DAX, for example, this is no sell off. It's a complete opposite. It's an attack on a very important region, I think, around here. This, this red line is around 15,900. The same is true for yield-sensitive, especially yield-sensitive um, 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 equities like tech stocks. So we are looking at the NASDAQ here. Looking, It, it looks small. It's not a, um, a sharp run higher. But when looking at your 50-minute chart, again, there's a sharp, sharp flush lower. And now we're pushing higher and taking out the... Um, highs here um, from the non-farm payrolls um, release, which is also, by the way, something we could um, take a, keep an eye on and, and probably think about in terms of um, how to trade it. But first of all, this is a very strong reaction. So usually you expect on rising interest rates and uh, an outlook on a, on a more restrictive or at least um, not moving fat, you expect with elevated um, um, rates, you expect the market not necessarily to sell off, but to, to see at least some weakness. We are not seeing this weakness. And this is a very, very, very strong sign, in my opinion. And probably one of the reasons is probably because um, Apple right now is performing um, um, very, very strong. Let me just check here. We are not having, a, because the thing is now you might wonder, well, why don't we pull up an, an, an Apple chart here? Um, the reason is because there's a delay. So this is a demo account for um, regulatory um, reasons. We are, we are looking here at a demo account. Um, and the, the thing now is that that we are not having that we are not having any any um, um, updates for 50 minutes. So when we end the webinar, we have the first print here. But I have real time data here on my screen. So let me just check. Wow, strong opening drive, 4.56 percent uh, higher Apple. So this is like 
shaking off, shaking off um, any any um, um, reasons to be to be skeptical. Very strong. Um, so if we can hold this here, and then you can see that. So this was the the, the resistance line here on the upside, one one seventy around. Um, if we can hold this one seventy right now with the opening drive and holding above that level, pulling in, but finding buyers against seventy probably seventy one already. Um, I think Apple is um, a potential long for the day. So first thing, and it's also due to the um, market cap um, um, Apple has. So it's the biggest company based on the market capitalization here in the overall market, having a very, very um, um, great weight uh, in the S&P 500 or in the tech sector in general. Um, and, and with potential also positive signs it's sending over to other big tech companies like an Amazon, Microsoft, the complete different business models, but but still um, 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 there's optimism to be found. So if the guidance was um, significantly weaker than what they delivered, um, market participants probably would have thought, well, nah, that's not very positive. Probably we should sell um, and, and not be buyers into the weekly close. This is very strong and, and it's holding this gap, at least of as of now. So if we're dropping now below that, well, that, that wouldn't be a good sign. But um, we, are, we are holding and we, we, are, we are driving higher, which is a very, very strong sign, in my opinion. Um, and putting this together, it's a very strong reaction in equities in general. So I don't want to be long gold in this environment with this drop lower here due to the developments we're currently witnessing in, in yields and push higher in yields, um, which is currently driving gold lower and also resulting in a drop below 110 here in, in the USD, but no continuous strength in the US dollar because the market is telling a clear story. Um, we don't see the Fed be more um, restrictive from here. Um, we don't want to be we don't want to be um, overly aggressively long the US dollar, which is now the, the reason if you have this this um, um, thinking, why is gold selling off that sharply? This is what I'm talking about when, when I'm talking about uh, manipulation, for example, in, in, in gold prices in general. So, okay, I, I dig into the questions um, um, in, a, in, a few, in a few minutes, okay? Um, so I, I have them here on my radar and I will, I will answer them in a few seconds. I just realized that there's lots of questions. I will answer them uh, in, a few, in a few seconds. So um, let me just um, bring this, this, this thought here. Um, 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 to an end. So you currently see gold selling off sharply while Euro USD really not moving that much. And that being said, is a sign that there's more to, to it than just the developments in the yields. And probably they're taking uh, the employment numbers as a reason to um, um, sell or put a lot of pressure um, here on, on, on paper gold in this case. So it's not physical gold, but it's paper gold and it's easily manipulable. Um, you can easily manipulate it. Um, based on on the big bullion banks in this case, um, it's also something to keep in mind. Um, there's um, so it's paper money, let's say. So you can you can uh, you, you don't have to 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 own it physically in this case, which is also um, um, important when you look at, for example, um, the the options markets and expiring options today. But having an an iron here on on gold, I think this is. This is a pattern you should keep an eye on and you don't want to be. And that's in, in this environment, long gold, even though I think we're a little extended now on the downside and we are having potential for a bounce, but you should um, keep an eye on a psychological importance of um, the 2000 levels. You don't necessarily want gold to close above 2000 um, in front of a weekend. People at a barbecue, start to talk to each other. And what do you think about the overall political situation? And what do you think about um, inflation right now? And so on and so forth. And have you seen gold? It's about to make new all-time highs. This is a topic, and usually gold has been a safe haven. Um, this is a topic you want to avoid. You don't want people to talk about this. And you can easily get this by seeing such a huge selling pressure into the weekly close because people are now like, well, probably I'm wrong with this. And, and that's not, let's say, um, um, it, it's not resulting in such kind of, let's call it a domino effect, for example. Let's see um, um, if, if this um, um, continues, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on and keep in mind when thinking about now buying such a, such a um, um, sh sharp flush lower here. So, so how to trade that this right now? So again, you don't want to be long gold right now, certainly. Um, if we hold above or close above 2010, I'd probably 
give it a shot um, into the next week. Next week on Wednesday, we have inflation data. Um, I'm very confident that we are about to see um, new all-time heights rather sooner or later. Um, and then we are ready to really take off and, and off the races potentially. But right now, today, you don't want to be long gold. I want to be long here. I want to be long um, equities due to the very strong reaction we're currently seeing. Look at this. Let me just check. Apple, where we are. 4.7%. So very strong. It's very, very, very strong. If we take out, if we take out 13,100 in the NASDAQ, I think we have a solid chance to make another 100, 150 points here back to uh, where we started this, this pull in, let's call it, um, um, based on the FAT decision on Wednesday. And um, yeah, Apple, you want to be long Apple against 171. If we are holding below, closing below 171, you don't want to be long anymore. But um, um, if if we get to see pull in against that level, but hold above, then I'd um, I'd be optimistic and probably expect a run up to one seventy six. But let's see if if we get to see such a push. And now I will answer the question. Um, Yeah, that's that's certainly true. There's a negative correlation to that. But um, again, so to gold and, and and the US dollar, that's that's certainly true. But look at the drop. So if we look, let me just check here the percentages. So gold um, is down for the day minus 2.2%, while Euro USD is currently down minus 0.27%. Um, looking at dollar JPY, probably um, dollar up against the JP, um, um, Japanese gen here, 0.5%, um, 0.6%. And then seeing gold dropping that. So I see the correlation that makes sense, but the, the aggressiveness doesn't make sense. So this is like, this is, this is, um, 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 there's more to that than just um, the negative correlation to US dollar, I think. Um, Yes, and certainly gold is also um, um, a so-called safe haven. I'm I'm one hundred percent with you here on that. So um, that that was, um, in fact, it, it sounded a little um, uh, probably sarcastic. I'm not really sure um, when I when I said this to Theo, but um, keeping gold um, um, bars in the safe, this is I think the um, the way to go. To in fact, so I'm um, just taking some of your money, buying gold bars, and putting them aside. This is the problem with that is um, you're you're saving purchase power, purchasing power in this case, um, but it's not generating cash flow, and that's one of the reasons for. I, I also think that um, um, guys like Warren Buffett, for example, are not very big fans of gold. I think um, um, to to overcome this, and given what we're currently witnessing, also in um, um, nah. The mining sector, that was the word I was missing. Uh, the mining sector, I think uh, mining stocks are definitely um, uh, worth a deeper look. Like Newport, for example, uh, I'm sorry, not Newport, uh, Newmont, or um, on also Barrick Gold, for example. I think they are both um, very interesting um, 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 stocks to, to currently watch because, and especially, I think Barrick, I don't know if i Newman, if I'm not mistaken, um, they're also paying quite interesting yields, um, uh, dividends in this case, in the current environment. Um, because they're um, based on the high gold prices now massively profitable. Um, and complete, this is a completely different situation than 20, 25, 30 years ago. And, and over this time span in general, where mining stocks have been cash burning machines, in fact. So this is also something to keep in mind that um, um, it, it should be a good balance if you want to prepare for um, um, a risk off environment. And I think uh, you really believe in um, fiat um, 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 currencies going lower. U.S. dollar, but also euros, for example, that you're um, in a in a good spot, having at least part of your investments within physical gold and also mining stocks, for example. And um, so, and uh, that's it. That's it from my end. Um, let me just hear jump over to the presentation once again and finish with the contact details from Admirals. So if you um, have further questions, if you um, have any questions around, especially Admirals as a broker, 
please check out the contact details here, send an email, call um, 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 the service support here. In this case, ask your questions. If you have any questions um, in relation to what I presented to you, um, also feel free to ask the questions to the um, AppNotes customer support. They will forward them to me. If you watch the recording now on YouTube, feel free to um, um, comment in the chat box below. I will um, make sure to answer all your questions. And um, that's it from my end. So I wish you happy trading. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week then on Friday. And um, see you there. Happy trading. Bye-bye.